Here's how I thought this was gonna go. What's up guys, Wylock here. Got some new 3D printers to talk about today. They did provide these products to me, but you're gonna be getting my unbiased opinion. And then cut to the end. Bottom line, these printers are all great. You're gonna be real happy with the miniatures they print. So share the love, spread the word, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I'm Wylock, make things play games. What I actually found surprised me. My preconceived notion before doing the experiment was that for a 28 millimeter scale miniature, the details and with the eye being two feet away, you're just, you're never going to notice a difference. Not worth the extra money for a 4K resin printer. Well, I'm going to show you the results of this apples to apples comparison. Bottom line is, I was wrong and my conclusion is bold. 4K screen resin printers are the future. If you're going to buy one today or going forward, there is no reason to buy one that's not 4K. Let us have a look at the new Elegoo Mars 3. Unboxing it is basically identical to other brands and models that I've reviewed. It's well protected, tightly packed, got some styrofoam inserts, plastic, box of the usual accoutrement including filters, scraper, glove, USB stick, etc. This is a handsome device. I like the aesthetics of it. Not that that really matters, but I mean, it also does speak to build quality. It's a tasteful mix of plastic and metal, matte and glossy finishes. Draws the eye to the right places. First time plug-in setup and calibration is pretty common. It's just like any other resin printer that you've used, and the instructions are good to go. Now for the experiment. This is a Saurian Warrior from One Page Rules. I've talked about One Page Rules for years now, great models. This is an excellent benchmark. It is my go-to due to the level of detail on it. It's a challenging print. So here's my army in the garage. At the far left, I have the Photon Mono X with the big build plate. But today, we are pitting the Photon Mono against the Elegoo Mars 3. So it's a simple matter of slicing it up using the pre-canned software that came with the printer and pressing go. Now the Elegoo did finish a little bit faster. I think it was like two and a half hours versus three hours, but I really don't care about that. And I don't think you should either. When you're talking about a 15% difference on the time, if the quality is notably different, that should take precedence because it's only going to take three hours to print, but you're going to own the miniature for 50 years. So print speed point slightly to the Elegoo, but I'm not giving that point. Breaking away the supports felt identical on both. None of the model came with it in either case. So let's glue these on some bases and get some close-ups. I used my DSLR on a tripod in full manual to ensure identical settings for all photos. Here's our first view. What I notice is that the mono has a few more flashing marks, which can be cleaned up, but it's nice not to have to. Look at his right forearm, okay? The right forearm, see those scales? They look pretty much identical, I think. So as far as rendering micro detail, both printers can do it. These look pretty darn good, both. Here's a view from the other side. Again, some of those white flashing points, but other than that, not too much to see. Although, look at the shield. Look at that pointy part on the shield. From this angle, you can start to see some striations there. This is where the not the height resolution, but the actual screen resolution, the lateral, is starting to manifest. Also, the horn on the back of his head. It's subtle, but now that I've pointed it out, you can see it, right? Here's a view from head on. It's an aggressive pose. It's an awesome pose. It's an awesome model, but it's kind of hard to tell anything from this angle. So I don't have much more to say there, but let's get a close up on the shield and the feathers on that shield. So here we are at the limit of my photography skills, but you can clearly see the striations in the body of the shield. You can a little bit see it in this large feather here as well. I mean, look at both of these large feathers. Everything's there. The central stem, the clumps of the fibers, it's all there, it's all rendered. It's just a little bit messier on the non 4K screen. And in real life, in person with the naked eye, once you've seen that, you can't unsee it. Back when these Saurian models were first released, I printed a whole 2000 point army of them and I'm about half done painting them. There will be a video on that eventually. But here's a completed one. This is my color scheme. And when we say that resin printing is going to threaten the miniature market, such as Games Workshop, I mean, I think obviously a requisite to that is the quality of the prints. And before I tried the 4K screen, I thought, hmm, we're basically there. Yes, I do believe this is now a legitimate threat. In hindsight, I was wrong. These 4K prints are pretty much there. It is like a part from a sprue. 
So the two models I just printed, I got them spray primed in gray, and then I based them with red, and then a zenith will top down with Baharoth blue. This is actually exactly how I start every model in my Saurian army. And we won't go further than this, because a zenithal is really good at showing details and making them pop out. Case in point, here's the same view as before, but with those two simple painting steps done, and look at the tail. It has caused all of those striations to pop out and you can suddenly see them. So when the model is painted, performance of the printer becomes more revealed. Here's a view from the other side. Again, look at the point on that shield. It's there, man. It's there. And our mega close-up painted. Oh boy, is that apparent. Like I said, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. I used to think what was on the left was awesome. And for the time, it was. But man, I'm never printing a miniature on a non-4K screen again. So there you have it. I think it is clear as day and I stand by my recommendation. Now I did use the Elegoo Mars 3 provided by Elegoo for this video to show off the differences. Anycubic also has a 4K screen model. I don't have any hands-on experience with that model, but I have used four of their uh, three or four of their other lines. And if the user experience is anything like those, I'm sure it's going to be fine. So get whichever one's on sale. But I can at least assert to you today right now, 4K screen is a must. Elegoo Mars 3, a fantastic choice. Thanks for listening. I'm Wylock. Make things and play games.